Did you know that NFC was first developed as a way to transfer music files? Most of us know NFC from contactless payments, right? We all use NFC technology on a regular basis and don't give it a second thought. But have you considered using it for an IoT device? Especially an IoT device that could use energy harvesting instead of a battery. Yeah, let's talk about it. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Energy harvesting has become more popular than ever before for a wide range of IoT devices. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Stathis Zafiriadis from Infineon and I examined the details of Infineon's NFC energy harvesting technology and how you can get started using this technology in your next IoT design. We discuss the connectivity and sensing capabilities of Infineon's NAC1080 and NGC1081 NFC actuation controllers and the applications that would be a great fit for these innovative solutions. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Infineon. Hi, Stathis. Thank you so much for joining me. Hello, Emilio. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. Okay, so we're talking about how we can enable battery-free IoT devices with Infineon's energy harvesting technology. But, Stathis, before we dig into the details, can you give us some background on the different types of NFC technologies? Certainly. So NFC stands for Near Field Communication, and it's a short-range wireless communication technology that enables the exchange of data between two devices, typically within a few centimeters. So NFC technology is widely used for a lot of different applications. The most well-known is contactless payments. You've probably already used that. And then we have the same thing for access control and many, many more. Okay, so Stathis, can we take a closer look at the NAC1080? What kind of connectivity and energy harvesting capability are we looking at here? The NAC1080 is part of a larger product family. We call it the NFC tag side controller family. And the NAC1080 was the first IC. We launched it last year in June. And then came its next version, which is the NGC1081. So for the NAC1080, if you look on the right side, it has ARM Cortex-M0 microcontroller inside it. It has the NFC interface, which means it can communicate wirelessly with NFC. And it has an energy harvesting output. We like to quote 20 to 50 milliwatts. An integrated half bridge for mod control. And then we have 16 kilobytes of RAM and 60 kilobytes of non-volatile memory. That is a certain type of memory that does not erase when it's switched off, when the power is switched off. So you can save some important data in there. Then it has seven GPIOs. It also has SPI, S2C, UART. These are all very important to our customers. The main difference to the NGC is the sensing unit. It has a 12-bit analog to digital converter and a 10-bit digital to analog converter. Then it has a current to voltage converter and an integrated temperature sensor. And it has some few extra GPIOs. Stathis, what kind of applications would this battery-free NFC be a good fit for? If you have a keychain that has 8 to 10 keys and you lose that at some point, then it's going to be a huge bummer. So we think that you can have that as a digital key in your smartphone. Then you could have a lot of different things that you can lock, like a mailbox, a parcel box. You can have a safe at your home and even have like a locker in your office where you can store some of your stuff there. So, Stathis, can we also look at the NGC1081? What kind of connectivity are we looking at with this solution? So, the NGC1081 also has an NFC interface that's ISO 14443 Type A compliant. Then we have the actuation, which is an integrated half bridge, 
and can drive a current up to 250 milliamps. And both the NEC and NGC can work in passive mode and battery supply mode. Generally, we like to quote energy harvesting capability of 20 to 50 milliwatts. And finally, as I already mentioned, that's the main difference to the NAC. It has a 12-bit analog to digital converter and a 10-bit digital to analog converter for sensing purposes. These are all very important if you're trying to read data from sensors with NFC. Okay, so I'm really curious about the sensing capabilities of this NFC. Can we look a little further into this aspect? So the analog to digital converter is a 12-bit ADC, but the effective number of bits is 10. Then the sample rate is 70 kilosamples per second. And we have four analog input channels. This means you can connect multiple sensors and read data from all of them. Then there's the digital to analog converter. The effective number of bits here is 10 as well. And the analog output voltage is zero up to 1.7 volts. Then we have the current to voltage converter. The current measurement resolution is one microamp. This could be very helpful in some healthcare applications where they usually measure a lot of trends in the current. And then finally, we have the integrated temperature sensor that's very accurate. And the resolution is 0.1 degrees Celsius. Okay, so Stathis, what kind of applications would this solution be a good fit for? So exactly like the NAC, we think that you can have two types of applications, the battery-free sensing and the battery-powered sensing. So let's concentrate more on the battery-free sensing on the left first. Some typical applications include the NFC tire pressure monitoring system. This is really helpful in bicycles. So you could have this sensor embedded into the bike tube, and then you could treat the pressure with just a simple tap of your phone instead of having to get your pump out and measure the pressure that way. Then we have the vital NFC sensing. That means you can measure the pH in wounds, you can measure the temperature, you can measure a lot of different things just by gathering some energy from your phone and then using that energy to read data from sensors. Then there's the battery powered sensing. In this case, you have the NFC data logger and the smart NFC thermostat. So in the NFC data logger, what that is, is there are some things like vaccines and food that are temperature sensitive. And so during the transportation, you would have to keep a very close eye on the temperature. And if that temperature exceeds a certain limit, then you would have to probably throw out the entire batch. So in that case, you can have this NFC data logger inside and treat data from the outside in, so you would be able to know what the temperature is and if it exceeded that certain limit. Then we have the smart NFC thermostat. I don't know if you have a smart thermostat at your home. I recently tried one and it's pretty helpful. The only thing is that a lot of people have a concern about data privacy. This means that all your data is saved on the cloud. And if at some point anyone gets access to them, it's going to be a problem because then if you raise the temperature at your house, that probably means that you're there. If it's low, probably means you're not. And it could lead to some problems. But if it's NFC, then you no longer have that problem. So this smart NFC thermostat is getting rid of the data privacy issue. So, Stathis, if my audience is ready to get started using the NGC 1081, where would you suggest them starting? The first place they need to start with is the development kit that's called the dev kit NGC 1081. It's a board that has already has the antenna on top of it. It has the IC. And if you look on the right, you can see that there are a couple of pinheads that are compatible with the sensor to go kits by Infineon. 
the good thing about this is that they can try a lot of different sensors like pressure sensors, they can try microphones, they can try CO2 sensors with uh, this uh, NGC 1081. What they also get with this dev kit is the demo mobile app. You can actually already download it on the iOS App Store and the Play Store on Android devices. Then they get the SDK for firmware and the mobile app development kit. And they get the PCB antenna design file, the application notes and the user manuals. What else would you like my audience to consider when it comes to these technologies? What we most certainly are curious about is what our customers can build with our chip. And even though we mainly target logging applications and sensing applications, we want our customers to expand that. And so one good application is healthcare, and you can measure a lot of different health factors with our IC. And if you don't need a battery, I think it's going to be an even better solution. All right. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Stathis. Thank you so much for having me. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Infineon. For Chalk Talk, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talk section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal. 